Hello everyone, welcome back to our Applied Mechanics lesson. So this is a quick one. On today's video, we will be um, calculating the magnitude and direction of the equilibrium force. Essentially, we're trying to understand if there is a system of forces that are acting on a beam that doesn't necessarily have supports or we are neglecting the supports for now. How will that beam react? Essentially, we're asking the beam, how do you feel about all these forces that are pushing and pulling against you? So I'm just going to complete the diagram on there. Fun fact, I had no idea I could essentially use a ruler on my screen to make my diagrams neater. But anyway, we learn something new every day. Okay. And this one has an angle of 45 degrees and it's pushing in. This one has an angle of 75. That one is completely straight. This one has an angle of 60 degrees. Okay. Then the given forces. This one has 1.2 kilonewtons. This one has 8 kilonewtons. This one had 450 newtons. Let's just put it on there. Then this one had 700 newtons. Okay. So right off the bat, you can convert from newtons to kilonewtons you divide by a thousand this is because we want a system of uniformity okay just divide by a thousand 450 goes here 750 goes to the last one all right then we have all our forces 1.28 0 0.45 0 0.7 the next step because at the end of the day you want to end up being able to um, equate your vertical forces and to equate your horizontal forces as well then that way it will help you come up with your system of forces and then you use that to calculate your resultant or your equilibrium force right then the next step on here you can come up with your components and this will be your vertical and your horizontal components then by now we know how to go about calculating our components so that will be 1.2 sine 45 1.2 cos 45, this is because 1 is opposite, 1 is adjacent. Then on here, I'll just show it on here because it's not, there isn't enough space to deal with it. We have 75 on here. So we would have 8 cos 75 on here. Then this one would be 8 sine 75 that's essentially what's meant to happen on there that one is completely straight then this one they're pulling away as well 0 0.7 sine of 60 0 0.7 cos of 60 okay i hope this is visible it feels like it's a bit dodgy but i hope you're following All right then from this point on essentially you will be equating or taking a sum of your vertical forces, then assume the direction, assume that it's pulling up. Okay. Then we have negative 1.2 sine 45 because it's pushing down. Then we have plus that 8 sine 75 over there. Then we have minus 0 0.45. It's completely straight, so we don't need a component on there. Then plus 0 0.7 sine of 60. Okay. Then you can plug all of that into the calculator or do it in bits and pieces. Whichever method works best for you. 8 sine 75. Minus 0 0.45 plus 0 0.7 sine 60. Okay, then I get 7.035 kilonewtons. And my answer is positive, so it says we have one going up. Okay, then similarly, you'll take a sum of the horizontal forces. We can assume that it might react going to the right. Then we have 1.2 cos 45, then plus 8 cos 75, then that one won't have a component because it's going completely straight, minus 0 0.7 cos 
cos of 16. Okay, 1.2 cos of 35 plus 8 cos of 75 minus 0 0.7 cos of 16. And I get 2.569. It's like 2.57 kilonewtons, and it's positive. So it means it is indeed going in that direction. We're not done, okay? So that was just to help us get the forces. Then from that point on, we can come up with our um, body of forces exactly as you see it. So that first one was 7.035. That second one was 2.567. And we're trying to come up with the equilibrium. So the equilibrium goes from the end of one to the start of another. Okay? So this is essentially the reaction we're trying to come up with. Then we have some included angles on there. All right? Then you'll decide essentially which one you want to deal with first. Whether you want to start by finding the angle or you want to start by finding the with the hua. Or you want to start by finding the um, missing dimension, the missing angle. So from the diagram we've come up with, we already know that our direction would be south of west. Okay? You don't need to be dramatic about it. We already know we're going south of west in the direction. We just need to find the magnitude. So it says we want this angle on here south of west it's not west of south south of west so essentially we want this angle and it will explain why we are essentially taking the angle from the horizontal and not from the vertical line okay so we have an angle theta here and then we have what's adjacent to the angle and then we have what's opposite to the angle okay we already know that that's what we're going to use but from our Sokatoa, adjacent over opposite, opposite over adjacent, we have our tan on there, okay? This is not an, an equation or a formula. I was just saying this is what we currently have, right? Then we'll say tan theta is opposite over adjacent, okay? I think this is might be confusing. Let me just take it out. Okay, our opposite is 7.035. Our adjacent was 2.567. It's still ton of theta. So theta will be shift ton 7.035 over 2.567. Okay. Theta will then be over 2.567. My theta gives me 69.95 degrees, and we already determined that it's in the south of west direction. Okay, so now we have this angle on there, it's sorted. Now we essentially need to find the reaction. We already know the direction in which the reaction is reacting. How is it acting? We just need to now need, need to find the force with which it's acting. So you can use one of two methods. Method number one is the way we use our components. So if you have this line on there, and we already know it's in direction, then using its components. Okay. So remember we have our theta on there. So essentially, this would be adjacent. So this would be the cos side. This would be the sine side. Then you just pick and choose which one you want to use. Okay? That's method number one. Method number two, you will remember or you'll see, rather, that essentially what we have is our hypotenuse side. Then that's our adjacent. That's our opposite. So you can pick and choose whichever method works best for you, okay? So method number one, remember we're trying to now find this, All right? And then we're gonna look at our triangle here. We have the adjacent side, we have the opposite side. We're looking for R, and we have the angle, okay? So you could, let's try the cos side. 
So let's say cos of 30 or cos of theta, sorry, would be your adjacent over your hypotenuse. Okay? So your adjacent is 2.567. The hypotenuse is R. So R cos of theta is 2.567. Okay, R divide on both sides by cos of theta, 2.567 over cos of theta. But we already have the value of our theta on here. 2.567 over cos of 69.95. So our R. 2.567 divided by cos of 69.95, I get 7.487 kilonewtons. Then that is the magnitude. That's if you decided to use method 1. If you decided to use method 2, we know that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. That's your theorem of Pythagoras. So if you're trying to find your hypotenuse, it would be the root of a squared plus b squared. Then you can just say the root of 2.567 squared plus 7.035 squared. It's all equals to 2.567 squared plus 7.035 squared. I get 7.488 kilonewtons. Close enough. It could just be a matter of decimal places and whatnot. But essentially, potato, potato. There's more than 100 ways to kill a cat. Just depends if you have the guts to skin it alive or not. Anyway, no cats were harmed in that say. If you have any questions, you know what to do. I'll see you next time. Adios.